We're Howard and Caitlin Newstate of the Newstate Nomads. And we just wrapped up our second trip to the great state of Alaska, where we spent over two months exploring by RV. And today, we're going to be sharing some of the must-visit destinations to help you plan your own adventure to the last frontier. This episode is presented by Winnebago. If you'd like to check out the rest of the series, there'll be a link in the description below to Winnebago's Go Life blog. Alaska is huge, from the beautiful coastal fishing towns of the Kenai Peninsula to the incredible mountains that you can find in the interior. So where do you start? That is a great question. While Alaska is massive, thankfully, there are only a couple of highways that take you to all the major destinations. So you have a choice. You can either go clockwise or counterclockwise. Now, some people call this a great Alaskan adventure or the Alaskan circle. But basically, when you enter from Canada and you come in at Toke, you have a decision. Do you continue on to Fairbanks or do you take the Toke cutoff and head south going to Valdez, Glen Allen, uh, and then continuing into Anchorage and the Kenai Peninsula. In 2019 and 2021, we kind of bounced around and made our own route. So you have many choices and you can ultimately decide what is best for you. Yeah, for the purposes though of this video, we're gonna be sharing with you the clockwise orientation and we'll share why and also some options that you have along the way. So Toke will typically be your first stop. There are places to refuel, grab a nice meal. Oh, there's a great salad bar. <laughs> you scared me, I was like, what's no, wrong? I, there's a great salad bar in <laughs> Toke. Uh, unfortunately in 21 it was closed, but in 19, man oh man, I was so excited because they claim to have the largest salad bar in Alaska. <laughs> and their food is really good and it is a welcome stop after you've driven all those miles through Canada. And as Howard mentioned, you do have a decision to make at this point. We have always taken the tote cutoff. This is a little bit controversial in the RV world. There's a lot of debate about the road conditions of the tote cutoff, and we've talked about road conditions before. We're not gonna touch on it too much in this video, but both times in 2019 and 21 that we have taken the tote cutoff, we found the road to be pretty good. I would agree. I think that maybe in the past it had been quite bad, um, but with the exception of a couple frost heaves, really not too bad at all. And it does save you a lot of time over going all the way up to the Richardson Highway and then cutting down to Glen Allen. Which you can do, and the scenery there is beautiful. You get really cool views of the Alaska Pipeline. Oh, yeah, the pipeline, yeah. You which can Howard actually, was very excited yeah, about. Yeah, you can stop at the Alaska Pipeline. I mean, you can touch the Alaska Pipeline if you want to, although there are signs that tell you don't uh, climb, climb on, on the Alaska Pipeline. <laughs> Scout even got to see it, which was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, but if you take the tow cut off, it will save you time. It will take you right down to Glen Allen and Glen Allen is kind of a convergence point. You have, a, again, another decision to make. <laughs> All about decisions. This feels like choose your own adventure. We would recommend, generally speaking, to go south at that point and continue on to McCarthy and Valdez. And these are absolutely beautiful destinations. This has got to be one of the most beautiful drives in the entire state. And taking the road all the way to the end to Valdez is your reward. On the way in, you will go through a canyon, you'll see gorgeous waterfalls, a beautiful glacier. It's incredible. And then Valdez is one of our favorite fishing towns. And it's a great reason to visit it, perhaps in the peak of summer, because they have the Far North Follies, <laughs> which presents, uh, that's Valdez, right? And that is, that is one of our favorite shows, period. We thoroughly have enjoyed it. We've now seen it twice. It was that good. Valdez has excellent dining. The activities you can do, including the Stan Stevens cruise, is absolutely amazing. You can see glaciers up close, lots of wildlife. And it tends to be a little bit less expensive, I would say, than some of the other coastal destinations we'll be talking about later. And you have a lot of options for both camping at a private campground or boondocking. Heading back up from Valdez, do you drive or not into McCarthy? Now, we would again suggest driving into McCarthy. It is a gravel road. It is how long, Caitlin? 60 miles. That's a lot of gravel. <laughs> it took us about two and a half hours to do it. Yeah. Go slow, keep your eyes peeled, and you will be okay. It's all about how you drive your rig. If you're gonna go flying down these gravel roads, well, you're gonna pay the price. But if you can take it nice and slow, you'll be okay. And McCarthy, the reward is you can hike on a glacier there. And we That was did. one of our favorite things that we did in Alaska. It was so well done. Our guide was excellent. The hike out to the Root Glacier is so beautiful. 
And exploring Kennecott, which is part of Wrangell St. Elias National Park, is a must visit. And you actually go through it when you're going to Root Glacier. We would highly recommend that you stop and check out the exhibits and a lot of the restored buildings to learn more about this important part of Alaska's history. So you finished with McCarthy, now we're driving up to Glen Allen, and again, you have a choice to make. We would recommend heading west or southwest towards Anchorage. And this drive is spectacular. I know that is a common theme, we keep repeating ourselves, but you will see all of the scenery just keeps getting better and better. These mountains are so massive, and you will come to a town called Glacier View, aptly named because you get incredible <laughs> views of glaciers. There are pull-offs everywhere, you can stop and take all kinds of photos. It's just breathtaking. Yeah, this is absolutely one of the best drives in Alaska. And you know, it's two lanes a lot of the time and you're kind of weaving and bobbing. Do take your time, make sure you stay aware of your surroundings with the frost heaves. Always be looking ahead. I'll give you a hot tip about the frost heaves. If you see squiggly lines, meaning where the yellow lines or the white lines are starting to squiggle <laughs> ahead, that means there's a frost heave and you need to slow down. And congratulations, you've made it to your first big city, Anchorage. It's really one of only <laughs> two big cities in all of Alaska, but Anchorage has everything. This I'm, is your restocking trip. Yeah, like if you want a Best Buy, a Target, a Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's, Costco, the list goes on and on. It can all be found there in Anchorage. And there is camping conveniently inside of Anchorage. A campground that we like to stay in, Centennial Campground, is directly across the street from a Best Buy, a Target, and a Lowe's. Yeah, and a movie theater. Remember we went and saw a movie. Oh yeah. <laughs> For many people, the number one destination in Alaska is the Kenai Peninsula, which is a very large peninsula, by the way, and we're gonna be talking about several destinations within the Kenai Peninsula. Again, repeating ourselves, this is one of the most spectacular drives that you can do anywhere. <laughs> the Seward Highway, oh my goodness, it just goes along the water, and then you'll start to see more mountains and glaciers come into view. And whales, if you're lucky. And if you're worried because we keep saying like mountains and glaciers, as you can see from this footage, it's all different. So even though we're saying the same words, mountains and glaciers, you can see how different this landscape is. The first town that you'll come across as you're heading down is Girdwood, which is a lovely town at the base of the Alaska Resort. In the town of Girdwood, they have a great place where you can do laundry if you need to do that, and all kinds of good dining options. But the highlight for us was taking the Alieska Tram up to the top of the mountain, where you get, again, gorgeous views of all of the surrounding beautiful landscape. And you can grab a good meal at Alieska Resort. Next on the route is Whittier, one of the most remote towns possibly in the world. If you want to drive in there, it is only accessible by a one-way tunnel that alternates directions on a time schedule. The town of Whittier itself is pretty tiny, but there's enough to fill an entire day, especially if you do the Portage Pass hiking trail. It is a challenge for sure. It is a workout. We've but, done it twice. And that's so, probably all we'll do. <laughs> so, well, but you know that it has to be worth it if we did it twice Again. in just uh, 19 and 21. And it is dog friendly, so you can take the pups and you can hike all the way down to a beach area, which is right in front of Portage Glacier. It's absolutely stunning. There are several camping options inside of Whittier if you choose to stay inside. Uh, it does close up at night. That is something to be aware of, that after the last scheduled switch of the one-way direction in the tunnel, you're in for the night. So you might be spending the night there if you don't plan accordingly. And even though, once again, you have choices, we would recommend heading this point straight down to Seward. This is one of our favorite places in the entire state. It's another coastal fishing town where you can walk along the harbor and watch all the fishing charters come in and see what they have caught that day. It is super cool. There's also the Alaska Sea Life Center where you can get up close and personal with tons of wildlife. And one of the most unique parks in the national park system is Kenai Fjords. There is only a small part of this national park that is accessible by land. Most of it you have to take a wildlife cruise and see it by boat but you can take a short 20 minute hike and you'll get great views of Exit Glacier. Heading back up from Seward, you will pass through the town of Cooper Landing. And admittedly in 2019, we didn't stop there, but we definitely had a great time in 2021. You will find some of the most beautiful teal water. I mean, I have never seen anything quite like it. The Kenai River is absolutely stunning. And we did a rafting tour. And by rafting tour, I mean, it's more of like a scenic float. Don't worry, you're not doing like class five rapids or anything like that. You're actually not even paddling. No. <laughs> so it's very beginner level and a wonderful way to see the area and learn about the area. Yeah, you're along for the ride. 
And one of the coolest things that we did while in Cooper Landing was visit several of the roadhouses there. The roadhouses in Alaska have a great storied history, which we're not gonna go into right now, but suffice it to say, each one is unique and different and frequently has delicious food. And one of our favorite spots that we camped in Alaska is in Cooper Landing, right along the river. If you're lucky enough, you can snag a spot with those beautiful river views. We spent a couple of days there and absolutely loved it. And the road through Cooper Landing eventually ends in Homer, Again, one of our favorite <laughs> coastal towns in Alaska. And the best way we think to experience this is to stay out on the Homer Spit. It's about four and a half miles of land that juts out into the water. And there are great camping options all along the Spit. And you'll be able to walk to all of the cool like shops, restaurants, and book a wildlife tour. It's great. This year we booked a trip with Rainbow Tours to visit Seldovia. And along the way we saw lots of wildlife, including killer whales. Oh, those were absolutely amazing to see. I had never seen whales in the wild like that. It was so cool. We also saw sea otters. Uh, we did a little detour over to Gull Island and saw hundreds and hundreds of birds, including eagles. So if that's your thing, that is a wonderful way to see it. And then we got to the teeny tiny town of Seldovia where we had a great meal and walked around and explored before heading back to Homer. And we even found a way to spoil ourselves a little bit while we were in Homer. We happened to be there over my birthday, so we booked a trip to the Homer Inn and Spa and had so much fun and relaxation at their many features, including a hot tub and a tepidarium and a sauna, and you're overlooking the bay and the mountains. It is a beautiful way to spend not just your birthday, but any time. Any <laughs> There's lots of great camping along the way as you head out of the Kenai Peninsula and back up to Anchorage. And again, this is another great stop for refueling, restocking, and resupply before you head on the Parks Highway towards the Denali National Park. This is another very unique experience within the national park system because most of it is inaccessible by personal vehicle. You have to actually hop on a bus and be driven through the park. So it does require a bit of planning. We visited in 2019 and had a wonderful time. In 2021, some of the same activities that made it so special during our first visit weren't being offered, understandably so because of COVID. So we opted not to return this year, but in a normal year, we definitely recommend it. You can go and see sled dog demonstrations and one of our all time favorite things that we've ever done during our travels, it's called a disco hike. And it's not for dancing. <laughs> I mean, you could break out some moves if you wanted to. You could, and I'm sure that they would support that actually fully for it. But oh, they did play disco music. <laughs> the disco bus and the disco music is for the disco hikes. And that's something that you have to book in person at the visitor center. And they are always different because each ranger gets to pick and choose where they want to share a hike somewhere within Denali National Park. Spoiler alert, they are all going to be off trail hikes. This is backcountry hiking and it's really amazing to experience. Particularly if you have never done it before, you have a ranger who is leading you and showing you how to do it. You'll see evidence of wildlife that had been in the area. You might even come across some yourself. We actually crossed through rivers and went through like a bog where it was really spongy, remember that, and kind of hard to walk. It was just such a cool experience and our ranger was so knowledgeable that once they start doing these again, and DISCO stands for discovery, by the way. Oh yeah, we never said that, did we? <laughs> the discovery hikes are very high on our list and we would definitely recommend them. There are great camping options right at the front of the park, which makes it very easy and accessible also to the towns surrounding it if you need to get supplies or meals. And continuing north past Denali, you'll come to Fairbanks, which is the other major city in Alaska. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten to do too much there because of bad weather or time constraints that we have, but there is a lot to do in Fairbanks. But we did get a chance to visit with the big man himself, Santa Claus, who lives really in the North Pole. The town of North Pole is where Santa lives with Mrs. Claus, as well as his reindeer, and there's a huge store that is full of Christmas wonderfulness and delicious hot cocoa. There is a really wonderful story behind how North Pole got its name and why Santa Claus lives there, and we'll have a link in the description of this video below so that you can learn about it too. A little over an hour outside of Fairbanks, you'll find Chena Hot Springs. This is a one-stop shop for 
all kinds of amazing fun activities in one of our favorite places in Alaska. Yeah, you really can do it all. It's not just the hot springs, it's also really cold because they have the ice museum. You can do ATV tours, horseback riding. There's delicious dining there as well. It really is something for everyone and has great camping located right on site or there are hotel rooms as well. Another really cool thing about Chena Hot Springs is their commitment to sustainability. Using geothermal energy, they are creating power and heating their own buildings. They're even growing their own crops there on site in Alaska year round. And that's 11 destinations that we highly recommend you check out while you're RVing in Alaska. And to help you plan that adventure, look for our soon to be released RVing in Alaska planning guide, which will be full of not just the destinations we showed today, but also the planning and preparation necessary for you to have an amazing experience. To learn more, check out newstatenomads.com slash RV Alaska. Thanks so much for watching and for coming along with us this summer as we explored the last frontier. And be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any of our future adventures through Canada and beyond. We'll see you soon.